Morning, I just wanted to record a quick video after what was a little bit of a challenging weekend uh, at Bucky Bashing. Um, uh, we had a number of people um, notice some databases go wrong, uh, down, some things go wrong. And so I wanted to use this platform to explain what happened behind the scenes, what we can do to improve things. It's been a bit of a strange week. We got some feedback just a few days ago from an old time member, low stakes, horse racing better. He got into Betfred, picked up the better part of £40,000 from a small system bet multiple he'd placed using the horse racing tracker there. That's a bit of good news. And whilst we take the good news, we also get feedback that things are going wrong and whether it's acceptable or unacceptable. So let's go through some of that just now. Now, the things that were going wrong fell into one of two categories. It was whether systems were working at full capacity and whether the, whether our numbers were correct or not. We've actually had a number of cancellations in the last few days over these issues. What I would say is that everything that we have is profitable. Most of it is independently proofed. Whether you trust it or not after all of that information is personal choice. But the BB Algo and the horse racing track is where I'll start. This is something that's an estimate of place probability. And we do this by looking backwards at horse races with 10, 12, 14 runners. And we just find patterns using something called regression analysis. And the better the R squared, which is a statistical measure of confidence, the better the R squared, the better confidence we have that the fit is appropriate. Now, if you asked us to model a 100 runner horse race, we'll just turn around and say we can't do it because we don't have the data, we've never seen it before. Someone's asked that, that or at least stated the BB algo is broken on the golf tracker. It's never worked. We don't use the BB algo on the golf tracker. The metrics graph is our edge there. The BB algo is used for 10 runner races, 11 runner races, 12 runner races, most runner races. The Grand National is quite a funny one because it's an unusual race, normally with 40 runners. We don't have enough data to have a confident R squared fit, so we don't model it. This year we did, and some people compared the numbers against the exchanges, and they said that our numbers were clearly wrong. Well, wrong's the wrong word. Um, in regression analysis and in all estimation of probability in sports events, you have good and bad, you have better and worse, you have um, areas where you can improve, you have really good models, but you don't have right and wrong, it's not that bullying. Okay, this is our estimate that has been shown and independently proved to be profitable over the long run. Over tens of thousands of bets under certain situations more profitable than exchange information for reasons that I'm not gonna go into now, but just picking one horse and saying the BB algo is wrong is a fundamental misunderstanding of what it is that we're trying to achieve. If you want to know more about this, go over to Frequently Asked Questions. Um, we've got a little section on horse racing and we say, why does the EV of BB Algo look wrong to me in a race? It's a question we've had before and we try and answer it there. Um, wrong, it, if it was wrong, we would pull it and not use it. It is profitable. It is different to the exchange sometimes and we deem that to be acceptable. The second thing on horse racing on Saturday um, is that in the morning some odds went stale. And this is because that's the nature of our game. It's a game of cat and mouse. We're trying to find the odds from the bookmakers. Every odd, odd all odds of every horse, of every race, every bookmaker over and over again. And they're trying to block us. We're trying to get it. They're trying to block us. We find a way around the block. And then it works for a little bit of time and then they figure out what we've done and they block us and we have to find a way around it again. It will always happen. I understand it's frustrating when it does happen. The feedback we had is why can't you make things better and not have broken trackers all of the time? Answer, because it's this game of cat and mouse. It will never ever be a situation where they don't go stale. It's not possible. It's not technically possible to do this. It will always be a case where we're trying to read them, they realize what we're doing, they block us, we find a way around it. Um, 
So for anyone that cancelled because they thought that our trackers weren't working or were broken because they saw stale odds, we will always have stale odds. We just try our best to identify where we've been blocked and we work our way around it in real time. 10 hours a day, seven days a week, 364 days a year. So there are always improvements that can be made and we're working on those, but it will never be a case where the stale odds go away. So if the trackers aren't good enough for you that you think that, you know, they're broken every day, which I don't believe that they are, but Saturday was quite a, you know, high value day um, with the Grand National, then it's a personal decision. But from our side, the BB algo wasn't wrong, as was claimed to us, it wasn't. We've got tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of data points now that show the return on investment hovers at around about 5% on the BB algo. And um, the trackers weren't broken. We know that the odds went stale. This does happen. And we fixed them as we discovered that we were getting blocked. And this will continue to happen. We can, we will try and work on improvements, but it's not something that will ever go away. The second thing that happened is moving away from the trackers over to the tools. We have a set of tools. We have a set of databases. I know there were, there were questions last week over um, Mbappe. Now, we had a number for Mbappe of 1.23 to get a shot on target. The exchanges didn't have anything early in the day, became liquid at 1.16, 1.17, 1.18. Uh, and the suggestion was we were wrong because we were different to the exchange. This is on purpose. We are modeling these numbers on purpose, different to the exchange. We could just use the exchange, that's possible. And any member can use the exchange themselves. You can put the exchange numbers into a private tracker, wait for the exchanges to get liquid. We're deliberately using different numbers to the exchange ourselves. We've looked at massive amounts of data, 12,786 players, where we found that the number of shots on target recorded was 0.1% different to that expected. So the model had this number, and the number that was recorded after those 12,000 players was 0.1% different. Really accurate. We've sat down with some of the top traders in the country at firms that supplied bookmakers with odds and we have gone through the methodology and the modeling for these um, databases and we do it to get an edge on the exchange and we know the numbers are different on the exchange and quite simply if that is enough to make you not have any confidence in our numbers and cancel it's personal choice that's okay but again i'm going to say that doesn't mean that we are wrong the last thing that happened on the weekend was that our databases of player XG, player stats, cards and corners went down around about 4 or 5 p.m. on Saturday, which was rather unfortunate after the issues we'd been having with the Grand National in the afternoon. And they came back online at 7 a.m. on Sunday. Why so long? We have a team of one full-time IT personnel and two part-time. That's how much budget we have at the size of community that we have at Bookie Bashing, okay? Um, outside of IT, we have people helping with customer acquisition, which is needed when members cancel. We need to get new people through the door. Without that, there's no Bookie Bashing. Uh, we have people going to shops and getting coupons. We have a number of people in the BB team entering bets all the time. And our IT staff is one head and two part-time members. The particular member in charge of the databases and the tools was in an aeroplane on Saturday, flying away on holiday. Nobody works 365 days a year. He was on the aeroplane. We couldn't get hold of him. So we just had to wait. We had to give him all of the information. And at seven o'clock in the morning, when he was able to, he brought everything back online. What had happened is we have three database servers um, it's okay if one of them goes offline, but if two of them go offline, it cannot work. And we didn't envisage a situation where two would go off at, offline at the same time, because that's rather unlucky. Obviously, something has gone wrong. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at exactly what went wrong. And we're going to see if we can maybe add a fourth database server. I don't know. I'm not 
the IT guy, um, but I promise you that there'll be a lessons learned that come out of it. So the databases, the player XG, the player stats were not available from about 5 p.m. Saturday, missing all of Saturday night through to 7 a.m. on Sunday, okay? For that, we apologize. Something went wrong. We don't entirely know what yet, but the period of time we were down for was 12 hours, and that's 12 hours over the last six months or so. So it's not a bad uptime, but it was unfortunate that it was Saturday night. We will work on it. We want to get better. We know what's acceptable and what isn't acceptable. What we found slightly frustrating was being told that things don't work, things are broken, that numbers are wrong, um, where uh, in reality, the reasons dictated in this video, that it's a game of cat and mouse, that we are confident in our numbers and we know they are different to the exchange. We do this on purpose. That's what we found frustrating. One thing on the exchange, Champions League match odds, you'd be pretty bold to suggest that any model that you have is better than the liquid market that is on the exchange at any given time in that market because of the sheer weight of money that is in it, okay? The amount of money that exists on the exchanges is directly related to how confident and good these massive syndicates that shape these markets are. Hop over to first goal scorer, shot on target. There's a tenner in the lay at a number. There's a fiver in the back. I think a number of people have the misnomer that that kind of set of that liquidity gives any information whatsoever about what the true fair price is. It doesn't. It doesn't at all. That's just Joe Schmo throwing up a fiver at whatever price he wants. Um, and you never know, Joe Schmo could be the greatest modeler in the entire world, but I, I very much doubt that he works for any kind of syndicate and has a lot of back testing on his model. Otherwise, the liquidity would be more than a fiver at that price and a tenner at that price. So just be careful about which markets it is that you're choosing to have confidence in. Some um, horse racing markets are more liquid than others. Uh, the Grand National, of course, being one of them. But what market are you looking at? Are you looking at the four, five place market? Are you looking at the eight place market? What's going to happen in the eight place market? You're going to find bias. You're going to find arbitrage players placing each way bets and laying the eight place market. Same in the US Masters. So even these huge events like the US Masters and the Grand National that have money in particular markets on the exchange, don't treat everything as gospel. Try and think of reasons. Can this exchange market be beaten? Can I think of a reason why numbers might not be relevant on there or whether I could even be profitable in these markets? But uh, if you always just look at every market on the exchange and say that's the correct number, and if someone else has anything different, then they're wrong, then that's going to limit your ability to find edges and angles throughout your betting career. Okay, if anyone else, if, or if anyone has any questions about what happened on the weekend, what we're going to be doing to improve things moving forward, just get in touch with us. Hello at boogiebashing.net, and I hope you have a good week.